Whoa, let's learn stuff. Connecting with Ragus. In this video, I want to go over this section about myself in the welcome and course overview page, which you can find under module zero. In this section about myself, there's going to be an introduction video. Following the introduction video is an office hours section, and this is where it will differ depending on the semester and also the course that you're taking with me. So in this example, I have three options for connecting with me without having to set up an appointment. There's the optional synchronous type of meeting, which I'm not going to say any more about that in this video because I already talked about this in a separate video if this is an option in your course with me this semester. And then regardless of the class, we will have these two other options. So this is my marketing principles class, where in this example, I do have an optional synchronous option. And then I'll show you another example. In my consumer behavior class, there's just the in-person and virtual, and then virtual only. Now, certainly this could change depending on the semester. Like maybe I, later on, I decide I'm going to have an in, uh, online synchronous and optional, how did I word it? Optional synchronous session with you all in the course after all. So really one thing to keep in mind is to look at your welcome course overview page in Canvas for final details. Don't just look at this video and say, oh yeah, that's the information for this semester. And as far as the in-person and virtual portion of my office hours, this is when I plan on being in my office at Athens State. And then I'll also have my Zoom running so that depending on what works best for you during this time period and day, that would be when you could either drop in or drop in in person or drop in via Zoom without an appointment. Now, just by its very nature, right, because there are no appointments with this option, it could be that somebody else is going to be there when you get there, whether that's in person or virtually. So there might be a little bit of wait time, right? And for those of you who are in the virtual waiting room, you'll see that there's a message about either sticking around or leaving some kind of message if you want me to get back with you. And then on Wednesday, uh, the next day, so I'm keeping it kind of generic as far as what I say, but again, right, take a look at Canvas for final details. Uh, the other day when I have set hours would be virtual only because it could be that I'm, I might still be on campus, but not necessarily. I could work from home that day or maybe I'll be somewhere else, but I have set hours also for that purpose where you can just jump in the Zoom link to join office hours that way. And the link is provided in the course syllabus and also this link right here. I want to make it more available based on what I have going on for the day. So I have it set up to where there's a link that when you click on it, you could schedule a Zoom meeting or you could just look at it to get an idea of my availability for a certain day, a certain week. And you can look up to two months ahead. So right now, for this video, I'm recording December 2023, so I can't go beyond February 2024. And I have my calendar set up to where you could look up my availability during business days and business hours. So that's Monday to Friday between eight and five. For example, if we look at December 8th, you'll see that I have available slots at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and so on. This is for 30 minute time slots. 
for a Zoom meeting, or like I said a minute ago, you could just get an idea of my availability if you just wanted to know for future scheduling or whatever, or if you wanted to request a different option, such as in person, perhaps you want to talk in person because you will be on campus, or maybe you want a phone call so we could talk. You can call my office phone number or I can call you if we schedule a time. Speaking of that, when it comes to the telephone, it's really, so let me jump to my contact info. I provided my email along with my office phone number. However, I put on there preferred method. It is best to email me because I'm not always going to be in my office to answer phone calls. However, if you set up an appointment to where I know, oh, you want a phone call on this day at this time, then yeah, we can make that work. Otherwise, you'll just end up having to leave a voicemail for me to get back to you. So going back to this, yeah, if if you can't, or if you not can't, if you don't want to set up a Zoom appointment, I'm available for in-person phone call or appointments outside of business hours. So that's where this available seven days a week to arrange time and method of meeting, time and method of meeting, that's where that comes in. Because I know sometimes your schedule just doesn't allow for that. Now I did put on there, non-holidays please. So if you want something besides scheduling a Zoom appointment, then please email me instead. However, you can go ahead and look at these time slots to get an idea of what my availability is for that day that you wanna visit in an alternative way. Now this part right here about contacting me, when you reach out via email, please include the course number. So marketing 331 and then whatever the CRN number is for your class. I have several sections, several classes per semester. And when I get an email without this information, I have to spend another, you know, minute or two looking for information so that I can get an idea of what's going on. So for example, assignment two or three or whatever in this class might look completely different from another class. And so I need that extra context there. Generally, I email back as quickly as I can, usually within 24 to 48 hours of receipt during weekdays. So if you email me on a Monday, I'll typically get back to you quickly. However, it might take me up to two days. And then after that, please feel free to give me a nudge and say, hey, I was just checking to see if you've received my emails from two days ago, because that's, uh, several things can happen. It could be that I just totally missed it because there are days or weeks where I get a lot more emails than usual. It could be that I accidentally deleted it or it may be just that it just never made it, or I thought I had emailed you back. So lots of different possibilities. So please feel free to give me a nudge if I don't respond within that four to eight hours uh, business days. Now I am going for that work-life balance. So we'll try for this upcoming semester that when it comes to the weekends, I will use that time to not be always looking at my emails to see what's going on and then to email you back. So what I'm trying to say is if you email me late afternoon on a Friday during the weekend or during holidays or when the university is otherwise closed, then I'll just get back to you by the next business day or yeah, something like that. And then here's that thing that I just talked about. Feel free to give me a nudge if I don't. 
get back to you within that one or two business days. This email communication timeline also means that it is best to look at your course materials, review details for all activities, and contact me about any questions early in the week instead of waiting until the weekend. For this class, that's important because due dates are typically going to be Monday. And so if you email me about an assignment Friday, well, I might not get back to you until Monday and then Monday's when it's due. So if you instead take a look at, as I mentioned on there, course materials, details for your graded assignments, Monday, and then you contact me on Monday or Tuesday, then that gives us plenty of time for me to respond and for us to communicate that way so that then you know, you're not getting so close to the due date. If you reach out too close to a due date, you might not receive a response back until after the deadline has passed because of that one or two days window that I asked for. And contacting me too close to a deadline, that's not gonna be an excuse to say like, hey, I didn't hear back from you. That's why I was late. Like, no, that's not gonna work. My deadlines, so last, mentioned there or a last point I'm going to talk about regarding this. My deadlines are designed to give you ample time to complete assignments and ask questions. Remember, our modules are for two week periods, and that's also how long I give you to work on assignments. So when I make it available Sunday, then you should start looking at it already. And then you got that whole week and then another week and then it's due on a Monday. So actually 15 days because I typically make it available by Sunday, but let's just say 14 days every two weeks, we cycle through a new module. So that gives you plenty of time. What that means is when I make something available, go ahead and take a look at it right away and then work on your assignment a little every day so that you're not brushing through it and you give yourself plenty of time. And if for whatever reason life happens, you're not gonna be so far behind that you will not be able to submit something on time. Or here's an important piece here that I'll talk about more when we get to your writing assignments. If you ask for an extension on your assignment and it's close to the due date, less than 24 hours, I'm going to ask for partial work because as I just mentioned in this video, it's my expectation that you have given yourself enough time to work on the assignments and that if it works for you to write every day to complete your assignments. All right. So that's what I wanted to talk about under this uh, information about myself.